Welcome to the Alpha Genix Podcast, where every week we talk to incredible guests from around the world of biohacking, well being, men's health, and more. Here's your host, co founder of Alpha Genix, Ross Tompkins. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome today's guest all the way from the other side of the Atlantic, Patrick Stracuzzi from Stracuzzi Wellness. How are you? Yeah, great to have uh, have me on the podcast and uh, great to be here. And I'm uh, glad that uh, I had the opportunity. Yeah, re- really looking forward to it. So for anyone that hasn't come across you, obviously you're a men's health expert, longevity, wellness doctor from, uh, from the U.S., a lot of our guests on this podcast uh, come from the U.S. because you guys seem to be way ahead of the rest of the world here. But for anyone that hasn't come across you yet, where does it all begin? Tell us about your your story. How did you end up in this space? Yeah, so um, you know, I'm a, a nurse practitioner. You know, there's some states that uh, you know, will will go after uh, nurse practitioners in the U.S. for um, you know, not clarifying what they are. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, my journey kind of began. Probably, you know, when I was a teenager, I always felt like, you know, I had like, you know, issues as far as like low testosterone, um, never really took it serious, you know, over, over throughout the years, I've, um, you know, went to a you know, primary doctors. And then when I was in the military, um, you know, was evaluated by some, uh, you know, military uh, doctors in the military base. And, you know, no one ever really like shared, you know, what my testosterone level was, or, you know, really validated the symptoms, which is, you know, obviously is very common, even in the US and, you know, all around the world, uh, you know, men's health and, you know, hormones not being optimized is a big thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I started, you know, I became a nurse in 2010. And, you know, was young and motivated, I was still in the military, and I, um, you know, really burned the candle at both ends, they say, meaning, uh, you know, I was working a million hours a week and still trying to, you know, be a young kid and never really understood why my uh, body was kind of not necessarily falling apart, but I, you know, I always felt like I wasn't doing enough or I I felt like I could always give more oomph. Um, But I always was like motivated and and hardworking. But um, I became a nurse practitioner back in 2000 and 16, uh, you know, did hospital medicine, worked in primary care, you know, still worked millions of hours a week. Um, but it really hit me one day when I was working overnight. Um, you know, I was just like, you know, I, I just felt off and I ran labs on myself and, you know, come to find out I had the testosterone, you know, I, was, I think my total testosterone was 170, um, which is, you know, uh, you know, nanograms um, over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And my free testosterone, I'm pretty sure was, I want to say it was like three or four. So it was like terrible. Um, and, you know, I had a colleague at the, at the office that I worked at, um, you know, I, um, part-time, you know, when I was still at the hospital, so I basically, you know, talked to them and, you know, asked them and this is back in 2016. And even then it was evident that, you know, men's health hormones, you know, no one wanted to touch it. They just saw a guy that was just, you know, trying to be a wannabe bodybuilder in their eyes, you know, like being a, you know, I was 20, you know, what, 26, 27, 25, you know, at the time. And it's like, you know, I just wanted to be helped, you know, and, and I went to my primary and my primary, you know, is like a good, good dude. He's an old school guy. I talked to him like I talked to my patients at my practice, just, you know, very straight up, you know, we, you know, he, he basically told me, he goes, listen, man, um, you know, I'll try and fight the good fight for you, but they're going to want all these stipulations. And I mean, I'm not too familiar what it is over there in the UK, but, um, you know, over here, you know, the guidelines are just, you know, way outdated, you know, not updated for decades and just you know they wanted me to basically jump through a million hoops you know which we did you know we had the you know repeat blood work you know so my testosterone went from 180 you know i was in the afternoon when they drew the when i drew the original one um and then i went and got it done first thing in the morning fasted like the guidelines recommended you know slept good for the couple days before and my testosterone went from like 180 to i think 270. And then they said, okay, well, you know, it's still not high enough, you know, low enough to get covered by insurance. Um, so we want you to go get an MRI. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I got an MRI, pituitary gland was negative, no, no, no tumor, nothing. Um, they didn't even check my prolactin, other things that we check, you know, at a good clinic, you know, to rule out other issues. Um, and they basically, oh, you know, it, it's probably just, you know, can be improved with lifestyle. And they wanted me to go the old Clomid, Clomiphene citrate uh, route. You know, HCG wasn't even op- you know, an option or offered. And it was just, you know, a three to six month, you know, terrible feeling, you know, being a 25, 26 year old guy. You know, I saw three different urologists. Uh, I saw my primary. I saw an endocrinologist. You know, it's like uh, one of those things where 
at the end of the day, it's like, I just want to be helped, you know, what, what, what is going to happen? So it was, it was frustrating, you know, as a, I was a provider, so I got it, you know, as far as from the physician that I was speaking, you know, the specialist I was seeing, I understand their frustration too, and how like their hands were tied. So even back then I said, you know what, man, it's, uh, this is a niche that, you know, I've been passionate about it myself. Anyway, I've always been into like fitness and health and, you know, seeing how it's affected, you know, my, myself, I said, you know, there's gotta be a way to, you know, help more people. So fast forward, uh, it, it was always an idea in my back, in the back of my mind. And I mean, I studied endocrinology textbooks after yin yang after that point, um, you know, followed a lot of people online as far as mentors, and then started taking courses um, over the years. And 2009, 2020, January 1st, 2020, I was like, you know what, I'm opening my clinic this year, I had a young daughter at home, a young daughter at home, my wife was pregnant with my second child, I'm like, you know, I can't keep doing this insurance based medicine, you know, giving people a pill for every ill, and just, you know, shoving them out the way. And, and, you know, well, by the time they come to see me in the hospital, you know, they're already sick as hell. And it was just something had to change. So, you know, it was just a grind. I did it all myself as far as opening up the practice, you know, it was, you know, January 1st, I had the idea. March 1st, I went and spoke to a lawyer because in New York State's kind of a pain in the butt as far as opening the practice. Uh, had everything set. Application went in. March COVID happened. And it was like, uh, you know, they got my paperwork, they never processed it. New York takes forever in general. And then, you know, you throw COVID on top of it, finally, you know, but I, I was kind of like, you know what, this might be a blessing in the skies, I can kind of revamp and really focus on what I want to do. And, um, you know, over the next couple of months, I just I made sure I had everything down point, you know, I had like a, you know, set up as far as I was gonna keep my, my expenses low, I was gonna do nothing but in person, you know, all these things ended up changing. But Long story short, June 10th, you know, our doors open. We had a patient that day lined up, you know, came and saw me, got labs done. And I mean, we've been rocking and rolling ever since. Um, and basically, I mean, we went from just me doing everything in, in, in 2020, and then uh, I was still part time at my hospital job and, and primary care job. And then, you know, about a year and a half later, I was like, you know what, I'm going all in, hired some support staff, hired a few other providers here and there. And now we're up to nine providers treating in, you know, 20, 35 states in the U.S. And we're really trying to trying to help as many people as we can, you know, hormones, you know, weight loss, you know, for men and women and just really trying to expand this thing. Um, you know, we try to take a more integrative approach, but yeah, um, that's kind of the story in a nutshell. <laughs> Amazing. So, so yeah. many practitioners that I speak to get into this space because of their own experience. Um, yeah. what, what happened to you? Because Oh, I mean, did you eventually find well, they still I I think what it ended up being, you know, being in the military um, and, you know, I've always had a hard time, like, you know, gaining weight and things like that. And I never really knew why, but um, I'm pretty sure it was probably stress from, you know, I had some trauma, traumatic events that happened. You know, my father died when I was 17. You know, I was an amateur boxer. I almost was trying to go professional, you know, back in 2000. 7, 2008, you know, I won the, you know, was on track to win like the Golden Gloves in New York, upstate New York, and all this stuff happened. And, you know, so I, I got punched in the head a lot. So, you know, I, they think it's, you know, after speaking to a lot of specialists, I think it's just from, you know, constant trauma between that and like not PTSD, but the stress, you know, on pituitary gland from being in the military and losing my father, you know, all, you know, it's kind of so between that and, you know, being a healthcare worker like yourself, you get it. Like it's just, you know, you're always dealing with stress, you know, so. It's very common, you know, in my, in my age group and even guys younger, you know, it's like, we, you know, the problem's not in the testicles. Um, you know, we do a million dollar workup and, you know, it's basically just life happens, you know. So, but yeah, you know, they still couldn't, you know, the MRI was squeaky clean. Um, no other real underlying issues that can cause it. So, The, the human body is, is so complex, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just one yeah. thing usually yeah. that, that triggers something. Yeah. Um, and But you did eventually find a physician that helped you huh, regain. Yeah. Your, your I, I guess you could, I guess you could say that. So um, you know, for me, I finally went the um online route, you know, I went I, a clinic. Um I don't want to say the name of the clinic, but it's one of the other uh nationwide clinics in the US. Um and they basically opened my eyes to what can happen when you go to a clinic that doesn't have your best interest at heart. Um, you know, they never. So before I ever started testosterone, I asked them specifically, listen, I, um, you know, I, I never my primary never drew my FS, FSH and LH. 
Um, I, you know, I had the MRI done, so everything was negative, but like, I wanted to see if there's any other issues, you know, and I basically knew that it wasn't in my testicles. I knew that it wasn't a problem with that, but I said, you know, I want to get a comprehensive lab done so that I could order it myself and have my insurance cover for it. And basically it was some, you know, provider that they said, no, no, we'll just give you the testosterone. And they just gave me my testosterone, never had any follow-ups, you know, all these things that you you hear horror stories of and like that's we we don't want to be a part of as far as our clinic but yeah it was um you know it was pretty bad so finally you know when i hired other providers that work with me you know we help help each other out prescribe for each other now thank god but to make a long story short they're um you know hormones itself is very safe you know we all know like it's super safe you have better chance of having a you know side effect from a baby aspirin than you do from you know taking hormones correctly um but you know the lack of continuity or follow-up care or, you know, people caring, you know, uh, is kind of where I kind of experienced the patient side and also the, you know, provider, you know, being a provider and being feeling frustrated where you can't, you know, feeling like you can't help people side. So, but yeah, um, I finally have been on testosterone, um, you know, since now 2000 and uh, probably seven years now, six, seven years now. Um, but yeah, you know, I have no plans of ever coming off, had both my kids, you know, my second one while, while, um, you know, um, while I was on hormones, my first one, I think I had, we, I started shortly after she was born. She was born in 2017, but yeah, you know, uh, it's been a journey. How, how has it helped you? What, what are some of the, the big things that, you know, really stand oh, out? I mean, I've always been a motivated person and I've always like felt like I didn't really require a lot of sleep or, you know, thought I didn't require a lot of sleep or, but, um, as far as my energy, uh, my outlook, um, my ability to handle, stress, um, you know, it's significantly improved your overall, you know, quality of life. Um, you know, the physical aspects, obviously, like the, the, the weight training, the recovery from exercise, the like overall outlook in life is just much clearer. It's, you know, I, I joke around with my patients all the time and they all laugh too. I tell them it's like almost like the equivalent of being born again. You know, like when a baby is born, like, like life is good. You know, if you are really suffering and, you know, all of our patients, have, you know, are that we start on hormones. Um, once that the beginning, like the the pain is over, it's like you know, it's, it's like a whole new world. Um, but yeah, I mean, my energy, motivation, um, and your ability to handle even things you don't want to do. You know, I I tell people, and I had a post about this recently, and I got some you know kickback on it. You know, it gives you I really think there should be more studies on us on as far as depression, anxiety, and like improving someone's mental resilience, you know, over here in the States, I'm not sure I assume it's kind of similar over in the in, uh, over overseas. But you know, everyone and their mother, you know, you go to your primary doctor, or your, you know, and you tell them the symptoms you're having. And the first thing that they tell you is you're depressed, and they put you on like an antidepressant. Yeah. And, you know, there should be studies comparing outcomes on people that start antidepressants, start hormones, start antidepressants and therapy, hormones and therapy and placebo and really see, you know, that change, you know, in outcomes. Because, you know, we all know giving out a pill for every ill is not the way to do any real change. And I tell this to my patients all the time, all the time too, you know, giving you just testosterone, not doing lifestyle interventions such as, you know, really cleaning up your diet and sleep, you know, those, you know, who are we if that's all we're doing, you know, we come just like a pill mill, but for testosterone. But it really does, you know, you tell someone, you know, you give them certain things like, okay, give them testosterone, you know, I, you know, they qualify for testosterone, you give them lifestyle interventions, they're more motivated to do those lifestyle interventions much quicker, in my opinion, than you give them an antidepressant, you know, and there's a lot of data to, sh to, to show, you know, the difference between, you know, placebo effect with antidepressants after, you know, six to eight weeks versus, you know, the effectiveness kind of wearing off over time and hormones, you know, the difference is, is that, you know, you could optimize and, and fluctuate and, you know, change the, you know, regimen of the hormones pretty quickly and easily. And if you're doing it correct and you're monitoring your patients appropriately, you know, the side effects that you would get from changing around hormones is in my personal opinion and professional opinion, less than what happens when you start throwing, you know, neurotransmitters and you know different antidepressants you know at, at patients so i think yeah. it's um i think there is a tide coming there you know in the united states at least it's becoming much more common you know i think it's great there are some people that view it as like uh you know bad because you know these people that open up clinics like, like myself they think that their you know business is going to go down i think the opposite i think the more people that become more they are aware 
you know, you're, it's going to make it kind of the standard of care. And I hope it does, you know, I hope that it doesn't become covered by insurance in a way. And I do in a way, I think if insurance can cover it and allow people to practice how it should be done, you know, how we do in the outside of insurance realm, where you're actually optimizing and doing things correctly, you know, you're not giving them one shot every two weeks, like they, you know, have people do and putting people on these, you know, aromatase inhibitors and, you know, saying, okay, I'll see you in three months. Like, that's not the way, you know, these, these drugs have done correctly, you know, really are life changing. So. Yeah, definitely. And you said something really interesting there, which is about resilience and improving resilience as well. Yeah. That's a really big thing, isn't it? And you mentioned about being more able to handle unexpected situations or difficult situations, because I'm a big believer as well that we're very, very quick, as you said, to label something as depression and hand out SSRIs when actually life isn't all roses like we have good yeah. days and bad days and you don't have to be depressed it's just a bad day like, yeah and, but the healthier you are the more resilient you are you get better at handling those days exactly and that's you know like i i put it on my socials you know my social media pages a couple of videos you know recently it's like you'll have a bad day you know i'm a father of two kids i run a you know very busy you know successful hormone and weight loss clinic so like there's gonna be days where i wake up and i don't feel as motivated even though i'm on hormones like it's kind of transient you know but what i do every day is i get up in the morning and i go on a cold plunge right in my playroom where my kids sit you know for two minutes two to three minutes every day at 40 degrees and i tell you what before i go in i may not feel the best but after i come in my whole outlook has changed you know there's something about you know really pushing your body to the limit and put you know it, extreme in temperatures, you know, there's some studies that actually show it, you know, Andrew Schumann, he's a pretty prominent neuroscientist over here in the US at uh, University of uh, Stanford, he has a lot of data showing that as well. But even across, you know, other countries, not just the US, people have been doing that, you know, cold plunges and stuff like that in natural waters for years. And, you know, it helps, you know, uh, you can hop in a cold plunge and, and change your lifestyle. And you're not gonna be able to make, you know, whatever's causing your depression necessarily go away. But it's essentially the same treatment as an antidepressant, but without the metabolic and long-term down, you know, side effects that you can get from being an antidepressant and it's in your control. And that's what I tell everyone. It's like, you can't try and control everything with the pill. You know, you can try and have your body adapt and heal those, you know, more appropriately. And that's kind of how, you know, we operate is from, from a functional standpoint in my clinic, you know? Yeah. What, why do you think there isn't more emphasis on lifestyle? and nutrition if you just go to your primary yeah i mean it's unfortunate it's it's uh all insurance and mon money base you know what i mean over here it's you know we spend more money than any other country on healthcare, um and we're probably the most you know chronically the most unhealthy you know one of the most unhealthy countries out of all developed countries and it's you know 100 percent because you know the healthcare system is just you know it's so flawed um, you know, it's hard to actually go over and explain to people how to change their lifestyle in a 15 minute visit where they're just basically checking off boxes. And this is going to sound very, very, very mean and maybe unprofessional, but, you know, unfortunately, most modern medical practices, you know, insurance based, you know, non-functional integrative, you know, they really are they're getting their guidelines from major organizations that are still, you know, telling people that certain things are bad for you when we really have data to support that, you know, like we're still pushing the low fat, higher carbohydrate, higher processed foods, you know, like my daughter goes to school and I could, we could see what she gets at school. And, you know, like my daughter's getting chocolate milk at school, which isn't terrible in itself. I love milk. I think there is great, but then, you know, there's, there's no restriction. She's getting, you know, bags of potato chips at lunch, you know, with her lunch and like all these things that, you know, it's just the system is so flawed for anyone to try and actually make real change. You know, the bottom line is the owners, the, you know, their margins are going to be impacted if, you know, that, you know, primary care providers don't not seeing, you know, six people or seven people an hour. It's really, it's sad, you know, it's, and I tell everyone, you know, by the time you are, are sick enough or unhealthy enough where you have to go see your primary more than, you know, once or twice a year for routine visits, the damage is, you know, so done that like, you know, a lot of these people are, they're scary with the medical misinformation that goes on, not only online and, and things like now you go to your primary and you're being told certain things. And then, you know, it's like this, this revolving cycle of 
no one knows who to trust anymore. And how are you supposed to, as a provider, gain that person's trust in a 10 to 15 minute visit where you're going to go over all these things just to check a box? It's, it's really sad. Yeah. It, it, I mean, we have a different healthcare system in the UK. Uh, it's not insurance based, but we have exactly the same issues. I mean, I've spoke to two GPs recently. One of them said the andropause doesn't exist. Uh, men with low testosterone have all abused steroids in the past. That was that was her stance. Uh, I was like, wow. And then and the other one said, you're never going to believe this, but I've just discovered a brand new form of medicine. And I was like, what is it? Um, and they said, it's called lifestyle medicine. And it's all about <laughs> eating right, exercising and getting good sleep. Yeah. Said, oh, it was absolutely brilliant. I was like, isn't that common sense that we've been yeah. doing for thousands of years? Like, yeah. It's not now. New. In the States, in the United States, they have a certification now. It's this big hoax. It's like, you know, you can do it. You could become a lifestyle certified provider. And I think if you want to get a credential and do that, that's great. But it's basically you go and you have to do like rotations. And I looked at the rotation and I was like, you know, let me do it a little bit, help with the certification. Maybe it'll make people want to, you know, look at me differently. And I'm looking at what they have to do. And it's like, it's kind of comical. So you have to go to a hospital you know, you go to like clinical rotation, you do like online courses and then, you know, they want all this money for it. Things like, you know, anywhere from like three to like 10 grand or whatever. Uh, and then you do these rotations and I'm like, okay, so you're going, having these people, these pro providers follow people at hospital based rotations. Someone's in the hospital with heart failure or, you know, uh, you know, uh, pneumonia and stuff. And you think that that is a valuable time to talk about lifestyle interventions when they're, you know, just trying to breathe and live. It's like, it's asinine. And then it's the same problem, you know, when the same organizations that fund these certifications, you know, they're being fed by, you know, in America, we have a, you know, a nutritional problem, you know, it's, uh, you know, we're overeating and eat, overeating the wrong things and under eating the right things. And that's what's funding this. So yeah, it's, it's just common sense, you know, but to have providers or people pay to get certified to teach common sense, it's, it's kind of, it's comical, but it's sad as well for medicine. It's like, you know, that should always be first before you talk, learn about any pill, you know? And like, I tell everyone, I'm up front with everyone in my degree as a nurse practitioner, you know, I remember anatomy physiology very well because I self-studied on my own. I remember pharmacology, you know, a lot easier because that was just like fed to you, you know, any traditional and all my buddies that are doctors, PAs, it's the same thing, you know, like the anatomy physiology part's great. The residency part is pretty good. But, you know, they all remember the pharmacology because it's just like fed to you. Like this, you have to prescribe this for this and this. And it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why don't we just take a step back and see what's actually going on? Like, you know, when did, you know, I, I love listening to podcasts and they say, great, you know, like when did, you know, cardiovascular disease become a statin deficiency? When did, you know, uh, depression come a you know, deficiency in certain neurotransmitters and this transmitter, you know, replacing this will fix it. Like there's obviously something going on, you know, more, you know, at a higher level. And I just feel like the more advances in medicine we have for all these very rare conditions, the simple stuff such as like metabolism and hormones that really will solve most problems, you know, are being neglected because it's, you know, the research is really into something that, you know, they can make the insurance companies can make a dollar off of, you know, whether it's a vaccine or a new pharmaceutical agent. It's like, you know, we have people, that, you know, all across the world, men and women that, you know, they just want to feel better and have their hormones better so they can age more appropriately and, you know, be there for their families, be there for their job, you know, be a better person. You know, they don't want, you know, testosterones in the, you know, free testosterones in the teens, you know, uh, whether it's a man or a woman, you know, no one, no one is happier or thriving with, you know, at, at those levels. And that's where it's like, you know, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And you just reminded me about something that another conversation I had recently, um, because you're quite right. You know, no one's ever had an SSRI deficiency before. Yeah. Um, and I was chatting to someone and they said, oh, well, testosterone's bad. You know, it's just steroids, taking steroids. I was like, well, it's not because, it, yes, it's a steroid, but you can be deficient in it. Uh, you can't be deficient in Trembolone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Masteron. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What well, you can uh, be in this yeah. sex hormone. Yeah. It's know. very, it's very frustrating. And I know there's countries where like, you know, testosterone isn't even a controlled drug. And it's fascinating because like, I think you talked about on one of your other podcasts, DHEA, for example, in the United States, you can go to any, you can buy it over the counter. 
Uh, and then like I know yeah. in like Canada and a lot of other countries, it's like a schedule two. Sometimes it's like illegal completely. There's a few countries where you can't even do it, use prescribe it at all. So it's just very fascinating. You know, um, testosterone, it's all of us, every single person has it, you know, like, and it's like to say that because you're trying to optimize and improve and just, you know, improve your vitality that it's, you know, you're trying to abuse, you know, it's kind of not really being a good provider. And could you imagine if you were in a clinic or in your office and someone came in and said, Hey, you know, I'm having a hard time with, you know, coming off of alcohol, you know, we give Suboxone and, and all these, you know, for, for substance abuse issues without even blinking or worrying about it. Oh, this person has a problem with, you know, opiates. So, you know, it's very big over in the US. Oh, so we got to put them on Suboxone or get them in a methadone clinic and like no questions asked. But the minute someone says, hey, you know, I feel like I'm not, my energy is not the best. You know, I, I um, you know, my libido is down, you know, having problems with my marriage, you know, things like that. Instead of saying, okay, I, this person is actually coming to me and just wants help we are just labeling them as a, you know, a male that wants to be a bodybuilder, you know, and, and women's yeah. hormones is a little less stigmatized, but there's still a lot of fear going on. You know, everyone in America thinks that estrogen is going to make women get breast cancer after yin yang after the trial that came out, you know, that was way back in the early two thousands. And now the tides changing on that too, but it's just very, um, it's very unfortunate because at the end of the day, most people, you know, I, we have some patients that come, a lot of patients that come to us that, have taken hormone steroids, you know, testosterone in the past. And 99% of them are not guys that are trying to abuse it. They were just in the same scenario as me. They were just trying to get help. You know, that's what people don't realize. Like, there's not like a underground, you know, bodybuilding gang that's, you know, going in and breaking into people's houses and stealing testosterone and trying to, you know, you know like, like, yeah, I'm sure there are, there are people that, you know, do it for the wrong reasons. This is anything in, in the world. You know, there's people that, you know, smoke marijuana for the wrong reasons but you know in the united states a lot of places are becoming recreational so any type of whether it's a pharmaceutical agent or a you know a more natural thing like a hormone you know there's always going to be people human nature that uh take it to the wrong extremes but you know me personally blindly um categorizing testosterone as this you know anabolic agent that's going to make you know men go home and beat their wives and things like that it's it's kind of comical you know i I've never had a patient wife call my practice and say, you know, my husband has been more aggressive and this and that. The only time I get complaints is that, hey, you know, my husband feels great. He's feeling young again. Now I need you to get me on a program because now I can't keep up. You know, maybe that'll cause a little bit of a, an issue. But, you know, it's never been like, oh, my husband, you know, beat, you know, smacked me or, you know, was aggressive. You know, if anything, it makes him more calm, handles their emotions much better. And I could speak a test to that. I ran labs on myself multiple times, you know, since being on hormones over the last, you know, years. And anytime my level was a little bit lower, whether I lowered the dose for something like that, you know, I felt myself more on edge and my levels were perfectly optimized for me. You know, I great, you know, my kids would be screaming and, you know, business be, you know, uh, you know, booming, very busy, you know, in the clinic or stuff going on at home. And I'm just like, okay, let's take a step back. Let's be much more level headed. Like it's, you know, despite what the, media or some people may construe it as it's you know a much more common uh, hormone yeah a hundred percent and it kind of make it makes sense as well doesn't because if what, what's more likely to make a man irritable and and, and upset or, or angry is it you know having low mood low energy low libido yeah. overweight unhealthy um, yeah. or is it feeling on top of their game optimized yeah healthy yeah. exercise like yeah. it's obvious it's the, yeah. it's the first one i had a patient uh you know um ask me one time well don't you think if my you know if you're optimizing my levels to how i should be you know uh I'm, i might get irritable and you know i might i might have like the energy of like a you know teenage boy or even like a 20 21 year old and i said i mean that's kind of you know a good goal i said i've never heard of a the saying you know a cranky young man you know you always hear the stories of a cranky older man like i you know you're this is like a 65 year old guy and he's like you know i don't want to get too you have too much energy and you know i don't want to be like a you know cranky teenager i'm like i think you might be a little backwards like i've never heard an expression oh yeah don't hang out with that you know 21 year old he's really cranky and you know irritable it's like no like you know it's, it's kind of the opposite and you know it's uh it's just funny because you know having someone's you know hormones optimized as far as their metabolism and their overall you know quality of life and vitality it's you know, 
there's a lot of data out there that they, you know, improving their chronic, helping improve their chronic disease, such as lowering their, you know, insulin resistance and, you know, helping with their blood pressure, things like that. You know, it saves not only the insurance company money, but, you know, the patient money because they're not going to all these specialists because, you know, when you optimize and, and help the body heal in a more natural approach, you know, it, you don't get sick as often. You know, the, a lot of the things are kind of help solve for you. Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned insulin uh, resistance, Seth. Um, yeah. So do you use the GLP-1 agonists in your clinic as well? I, I do. Um, you know, we, we at our clinic, we do have an approach where our goal is not to start people on the GLP-1s and have them stand up forever. Um, you know, I, our goal is really to help enforce most of our patients. We have a strictly separate weight loss clinic, you know, weight loss part of our practice where people aren't on hormones as well, men and women. But like most of our people that are on hormones, they will, and they want to try and lose more weight, what, you know, after they're optimized and, you know, they um, they will start these GLP ones. And we do tell them, you know, this is not like a replace your lifestyle with a GLP one. You know, that's not, what, no, that's not what we want to do either. Cause then we're just like anything, any other chronic disease, but you know, we have had people that are on these for six months to a year and we really try to reinforce you have to, do resistance training, you know, with all the studies coming out about loss and muscle and stuff, you know, I do think it's a little bit overblown, you know, in our patient population, we tell them, you know, I want you to take pictures before you start and after. So that way, if you notice that you're losing muscle or, you know, different things, you know, definitely keep an eye on it. But, you know, we, we use them pretty effectively. We have, we have people that have lost anywhere from, you know, 40 to hundred pounds, you know, in, in, in six months to a year because they combine it with hormones, you know, I tell everyone it really is good to optimize your hormones, you know, your testosterone, you know, your, your IGF one, your insulin like growth factor, um, you know, and, and your, you know, uh, lose some weight at the same time. Cause you know, it's more not necessarily bang for your buck, but it's more, you know, bang for your metabolism. Um, but yeah, we, we have great success in the GLP ones. Um, and I, I hope that the, I think there'll be, you know, the drug of the future. Um, you know, now there's some more studies co coming out showing how the benefits, you know, lowering people's cholesterol. And we have been able to, against their cardiologist and uh, 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 belief or blessing or, um, you know, lower people and get them off statins. Um, so it's great, you know, because, you know, statins, I'm not anti-statin, just like I'm not anti-antidepressant. I think they have their place. I just think that they have way too much of a place in the United States instead of lifestyle. So, you know, anytime we can give someone a, an ability to reverse the issue, which is what, um, you know, these GOP ones do for a lot of people, I think they're fascinating. Yeah. And, and TRT as well, of course, we can reverse um, type two diabetes. Absolutely. You know, we've had, you know, there's people that have posted all over social media. A lot of our patients, you know, we have a guy, 72 year old man that was type two diabetic you know, his uh, primary care provider wanted him to see an endocrinologist, you know, because um, he was worried that he was going to possibly need insulin and, you know, never checked his testosterone, never checked his free testosterone, never checked his insulin level, which is like baffling to me. Um, and, you know, he came to us and, you know, six months later, he's down 42 pounds. He's no longer on metformin. He's no longer on, you know, three of his blood pressure medicines. He's only he's taking a low dose and lodipine, he was on the Cinepro, he was on um, a Toprolol, all these things. And, you know, I basically, you know, had a long talk with him. I was like, listen, this is what we're going to do. You've been on these drugs for four years. You know, you're having, you know, polypharmacy, multiple side effects, uh, you know, from all these drugs you're taking, you know, you're 72 years old. Um, these drugs might keep you alive and give you, you know, another five to 10 years what is your quality of life going to be when you're having joint pain, when you're having, you know, issues with your kidneys from all these different drugs that you're on, um, you know, sexual dysfunction from a lot of these drugs that you're on, you know, is that the, is that how you want to live? You know, if, if so, that's fine. We don't have to do anything, but long story short, you know, his testosterone level was super low. Um, gave him some testosterone, optimized his testosterone. Um, blood pressure came way down. He lost a lot of weight. He feels great. He feels so good that he's so bored. He might actually go back to work. I said, listen, you're 72, like enjoy life. But he's like, you know, I, I'm getting at, you know, I, I get bored at home. You know, I go to the gym, I walk, I spend time with my friends, but you know, I, I feel like I need to get a job. I was like, oh, you can come work for me. But anyway, um, yeah, it's, you know, that's one of the many patients that type two diabetes, insulin resistance, you know, the metabolic syndrome, it's, it's not going away. Um, so I feel like, you know, the functional integrative medicine approach is it's got to be the the way of the future. Otherwise, you know, I, the healthcare system is going to crash. You know, it's just, we're spending too much money. We're spending too much time, not 
preventing the problem. And as a result, you know, we can't keep up with treating it. You know, it's look at all the data, you know, the cardiovascular disease in the United States over the last 50, 60 years, it's not getting any better. You know, we're spending more and more money on drugs and, and, you know, the, the, the deaths are not getting any, you know, we're not, people aren't necessarily improving their quality of life. Their deaths may be slightly down every couple of years, but, you know, I tell everyone my, my firm belief looking at the studies and everything, if you look into it deeply, the advancement in the technology as far as the ability to diagnose and the surgical advancements is really the only thing that's keeping us from, you know, dying at an alarmingly high rate, you know, because you you could diagnose a plaque in an artery, great, and go in and fix it. But, you know, if you're not, you know, preventing that, that, that clog from happening again, you know, with more effective remedies, you know, what's the point, you know, statins are at an all time high being prescribed, but people are still getting plaques in their arteries. You know, it's like, no one talks, you know, no one wants to say that. It's like, Hey, you know, people's, you know, on the max dose of statin, but they're still having plaques in the arteries, you know, you're telling them to eat a low fat, low cholesterol diet, the plaque is still there. And, you know, now we're coming all the stuff coming out showing that, you know, dietary cholesterol really is no correlation with what happens in the arteries. But most people don't want to hear that. But you know, it's testosterone is great. It's anti inflammatory, you know, I've seen real time, you know, two to six between two to six months, you know, people's inflammatory markers, such as their CRP and ESR, you know, go from, you know, greater than 10 to less than one undetectable with, you know, simply, you know, cutting out a lot of the junk in their diet, starting hormones and just becoming a, you know, better, cleaner version of themselves. So it's, um, you know, it's definitely the wave of the future and I'm excited to be on this journey to continue to help people. Love it. And you can really hear you, the, the passion and the enthusiasm, enthusiasm that you've got. So I'm sure your patients absolutely love coming to speak to you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, we have a good team. You know, we have a couple, you know, a bunch of rock star staff and a lot of other providers too. You know, it's, we're in, you know, nine other providers that work with us. So we really do try to keep it like a small town, cl- you know, small clinic feel, but we are treating in like, you know, 35, 36 states. So, and more to come. But yeah, I, I like to reemphasize that with everyone, you know, uh, the branding and stuff, you know, the name is Jacuzzi Wellness, Improve You Today, you know, really eventually will just be Improve You Today. I kind of want to not, not be not, not known as the only provider, but. Um, yeah, man, it's, um, you know, it's a journey and uh, entrepreneurship and, and being able to treat the right way is, you know, what it's all about. Definitely. Do you use any of the other peptides in the US? I know there's been a bit of a pushback on those recently. Yeah, so we do, you know, we still use a lot of them, you know, IGF-1, LR3, um, testamorelin is a great one that we use. We use um, hexarelin. So the big one that really got banned that a lot of people are upset about is the CJC-1295 and ipamorelin. Like that was the most popular one. And as a result, a lot of the pharmacies, you know, they were making them before, but now they're really pushing them. And we've always been using them. Testamorelin, it kind of is in the same class as CJC-1295. And then the hexarelin is a more potent version of ipamorelin, not as selective meaning that it can have a little bit more side effects and it's not as um has a shorter half-life but yeah we um we use we use those two uh you know those peptides pretty effectively as a substitute and um you know body pentadeca peptide it's basically a more modified safer version of bpc 157 we're still using that uh tb 500 we're still using um ibutamorin so a lot of these that you know a lot of these pharmacies, they basically have been reevaluating and, and meeting with the FDA guidelines and compliance and tr- really trying to, um, you know, be be stingy, you know, be uh, compliant with it. But just like anything else, you know, when you look into the, the reports of why they ban them, it has nothing to do with safety. You know, there's some issues with like BPC-157 and, you know, Im- uh, immunogenicity and, you know, none of my patients. We saw all the clinics basically said the same thing. We didn't see any of the reported issues. Um, so, you know, from what I understand unofficially, obviously, um, it's all basically a a scheme to get, you know, insurance companies want to start trying to offer these peptides because they're a big, 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 uh, moneymaker, um, for insurance companies, you know, they could, you know, offer it, but yeah, Samoralin we still use. So, um, and we still use a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of the sexual peptides as well that are still available, PT-141, you know, Trimix, um, HCG, we're obviously still using and stuff, but yeah, um, I think peptides are great and I think they are, they will be the treatment of now and definitely for the future. I mean, you know, all the, all the money going into the study, you know, researching and stuff. What are some of them, if, if anyone hasn't come across those, um, obviously there were loads of words there that people might be yeah. going, what on earth is that? Yeah. So if you, if you take your top three, um, what are they and what do they do? Yeah. So 
a lot, almost at my clinic at least, our three most popular ones that we prescribe regularly um, is IGF-1 LR3, which is kind of a fascinating peptide. Um, it kind of mimics insulin in a way in the body as far as its anabolic properties. But I mean, and IGF-1 LR3 is amazing. Um, it definitely helps uh, with autoimmune issues. It helps with collagen synthesis. It helps people, you know, you really can use it to either help put on a little bit of lean muscle muscle mass that you've lost due to aging and stuff. Or we have people that, you know, do it in a fasted state, as long as they don't have any issues with hypoglycemia, you know, people that really lose weight, um, you know, on this drug. Um, and I mean, it's great for joint pain. It's my personal favorite, um, as far as what I um, have used personally, um, just because it kind of leaves the options open. Um, so that's a great potent, uh, very, very potent one that, um, you know, you do it for 10, you know, six to 12 weeks um, at a low to moderate dose. And I mean, it has fascinating effects. Um, and then this one, that IGF-1 LO3 acts a little differently because it actually works directly on the IGF-1. So when people take peptides, most of the, the growth hormone releasing peptides, they fall into two categories. There's the GHRP peptides, and then there's the GHRH peptides. And then there's IGF-1, you know, at our practice, which kind of has its own category. It works amazing. But um, Tessamorelin is the other one that's very popular as far as our GHRH peptide. Um, and that one, you take it at bedtime, uh, five to six nights a week. It helps you sleep like a baby. Um, and it's fascinating. You know, it's one of the first ones uh, approved by the FDA. And it was really targeted for people with something called lipodystrophy. So back in the day, it was made for people with HIV and even hepatitis or any type of muscle wasting conditions. And that one, it really targets the stubborn belly fat. So the studies are pretty fascinating. Um, and they've done <laughs> studies on people without this condition as well. Um, but the studies that were around originally showed that the people had to take a very high dose of tessamorelin to get um, uh, profound weight loss effects. And now, you know, the more studies that have come out, you know, you don't need near as much of a, um, a, a high of a dose. And I mean, it literally targets the stubborn belly fat, helps with joint pain. Um, and it really just kind of gives you like an overall better sense of uh, well-being. I've had some people that reports, you know, improved mood and depression, you know, and let less anxiety on it. So it's fascinating. Um, and then the other one that most people like um, as far as peptides um, is either the regenerative peptides is either TB500 or um, body pentadeca peptide. Those are both regenerative peptides. Um, you know, TB500 is my personal favorite because it kind of works on something called actin. Um, and it definitely has been shown to help um, re re heal the body. Um, also kind of helps with immune, uh, immune uh, boosting a little bit. Um, and it's, it's fascinating. It has its whole relationship with myosin and actin. It's, it's, it's a really fascinating peptide. And then body pentadeca peptide is very similar to BPC-157. Um, you know, at our clinic, we have something called like a Wolverine stack, which is basically a combination of body pentadeca peptide uh, one, and um, TB-500. And then a lot of people uh, combine with one of the GHRH peptides like tesamorelin or hexarelin. And I mean, it really helps as far as acute injuries and chronic injuries and also helps, um, you know, people, we have a lot of people that have like, if they're having surgery, they'll come to us to help heal. And I mean, it's fascinating as far as the recovery time. You know, I've, I've gotten yelled at by a few orthopedic surgeons because they were wondering what I gave their patients because, you know, their shoulders and like hips healed amazingly. And I thought I, I gave them like stem cells or something. I'm like, no, 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 it's, you know, peptides, but you know, it's one of those That's things where name as well. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Wolverine, man. My favorite X-Men, one of my favorite superheroes, you know? Yeah. I, we call it the Wolverine stack, but yeah, it's, um, I think peptides are fascinating. I think, uh, anytime, you give people an ability to help their body heal themselves and not just mask symptoms. I think it's you know fascinating and peptides are very specific, um, very low side effect profile. And they're, you know, they promote such amazing uh, improvements in quality of life and, and change of healing that I think it's, you know, that definitely the future. Mm, yeah, I love that. Is there anything that we haven't spoke about that you would love the viewers to know about you and your practice? Um, you know, I think that with in the, in the United States, you know, there's a lot of clinics opening up and I think it's a great time for people, patients to really do their research um, and, you know, really look into what this, you know, their clinic is about. And unfortunately, you know, you see an ad on social media or you see a, you know, add on Google or like a YouTube ad, 
And, you know, there's a lot of good marketing campaigns, you know, going on. And a lot of places, unfortunately, they are good at selling a service or a plan. And there's a lot of patients that feel like they're being taken advantage of. So I just tell everyone, you know, do your due diligence, you know, check people's reviews. Um, you know, a big social media following doesn't always necessarily mean that the, the clinic is better. Um, you know, we really do care about at our clinic we really care you know we're clinicians first a lot of our services our prices on our services were severely you know underpriced for the market and from a business standpoint you know people would say you know what are you doing you're killing yourself for no reason but at the end of the day our core is you know to really help people first and that's what i tell everyone you know you can make money in today's world doing whatever you want you know doing anything if you work hard enough and hustle hard enough you know healthcare should not be one of the places where you're trying to become a multimillionaire. you know the, the get rich, get rich quick schemes that's out there, healthcare and, and medical practices aren't, you know, that's not what we're about and that's not what it should be about. So I just tell everyone, you know, look for someone that has your best interest in heart, you know, um, someone that actually will take the time to explain things to you and actually gives a damn. And that's kind of what we're all about at my, you know, my clinic There's all, all 10 providers that work there and all of our staff, we really care. Love that. Thank you. And if, if anyone's watching and they're like, I want to reach out to Patrick and see if he can help me, where do they find you? Yeah, I mean, so the steps are, they sound complicated, but they're relatively simple. So the easiest way, um, we have a whole CRM software that kind of ma- allows us to track in real time and myself too. But if they go to the website, www.improveyoutoday.com, all of our services are listed. Um, and it kind of explains the process at the bottom of the page. But if they click on the contact us page, you know, it'll explain the steps. So basically, they enter their information, you know, they their name, address, email address, date of birth. They select which program they may be interested in. Once they select that, it goes to all of my support staff and myself. I review all new patient in- increase within like one to you know twelve hours max, unless it's the middle of the night and they're on a booth the next morning. Based off that, we send after they send us consent uh, send send information is we'll send them consent forms. Once they send the consent forms in, and it could all be done electronic, you know, it's all done electronically. I look at the consent forms and I'll order a comprehensive lab evaluation and it goes to uh, all lab corps in the United States with their, you know, with the patient's name, we allow insurance to cover their labs uh, and their insurance should cover most, if not all their labs. Once their labs are done, um, you know, someone from my office will reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, your labs are back. We have your consent forms. Let's get you on the schedule and we'll schedule with either myself or the other provider. So ideally the turnaround time from the, initial contact should be you know two week turnaround time by the time you reach out to us you're having your meds at home self-injecting we go over you know how to inject and and go from there brilliant patrick thank you very much for your time love the conversation and i'll get back to your day have a great day awesome thank you take care thank you everyone Thank you for listening to the Alpha Genics podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss next week's episode. For more resources on Alpha Genics and men's health, visit alphagenics.co.uk. Until next time.